Hello everyone and welcome back to my channel. If you're new here, my name is Elizabeth and I run the blog lifefromtheviolasection.com where I share my favorite practice tips, general advice, and tech for musicians. Today I want to share just a couple recording tips that I've picked up making my own recordings as a classical musician. I'm not a professional in recording by any means, but just making my own recordings through COVID and just for different audition opportunities and things like that, I have picked up a few tips that I would like to share with you guys. If you are recording often and you have really good equipment, this video might not be for you. These tips are probably a little too basic, but if you need to get a recording done for an audition or even like a pre-audition kind of thing, or, or if you just want to post a performance of yourself on YouTube to get your name out there a little bit, then I think this is going to be more for you. So in general, try to use the best equipment that you have. If the highest quality camera that you have is a phone, which probably is what most people are working with, that'll be okay. Phones now are... Phones now record in 4K, they have autofocus, and they can record some really, really high quality stuff, at least visually. So that can be good, or if you have a DSLR camera, then that is probably going to be good too. Just compare the stats of your phone versus your camera if you have both, and maybe just go with whatever is better. Same kind of idea goes for microphones. If the highest quality audio recording device that you have is your phone, then go with that or if you have any kind of external mic that is usually going to be at least a little bit higher quality than a phone right now. So USB mics are a great option for beginners. I used to use a Samson Go mic um, very often. On this camera, I have a Rode, I think it's like a Go mic. I'll put it up here so that you can look into that if you want. I find that my viola tends to kind of max out this particular microphone, but it usually has a little bit more depth and range of dynamic than my iPhone microphone usually does. I also have Shure SM57 mics that I plug into a Focusrite Scarlett 2i2 interface. This is a huge bump up in quality from the microphone on my camera or a USB mic or an iPhone microphone. So I highly recommend getting something like that um, microphones that require an audio interface because you're going to get such a higher quality of sound. There's more depth, range of dynamics, and the quality sounds so much more crisp and almost like you're there in person. So if you want to upgrade your mics, definitely do a bit of research, especially for your instrument in particular. So I think that the Shure SM57 mics work pretty well for string instruments, um, but other mics are better suited for vocals or brass or winds or percussion. So definitely look up your instrument and mic recommendations for that in particular for your needs. So tip one, use the highest quality equipment that you have. Tip number two, use bright, very good lighting. So um, a common thing that I do when I make YouTube videos is I do not use any external lighting and I know that it isn't great. So I do have a couple ring lights um, I'm actually using it today, but I have it kind of facing up because when I use it, you can see the reflection in my glasses and it really makes my eyes hurt. Um, this is a USB one and it also has controls to make it brighter or um, brighter or more dim. Right now I just have it on the standard setting and I have it propped up on a music stand. So that adds at least a little bit of extra lighting to my video but oftentimes when I make YouTube videos, I forget to do any of that, and then they come out just a little bit too dark. It's a little hard to see details, and it makes the video look a little grainy. So definitely turn all the lights in the space that you're in, add any ring lights or external lighting that you have. I also have a fancy kind of light box that I will use when I make actual recordings of myself playing. I just don't often use it for YouTube videos. As for location, find somewhere quiet, somewhere with a background that you're comfortable with and somewhere where you have enough room to actually play your instrument and make music. I see this so often with my online students. <laughs> they will set up just somewhere where they can put their computer, but they're trying to play like this because there's like a wall next to them or a bookcase or something like that. And they can't get a good sound because they're all cramped up and it doesn't work very well. So when you're making a recording, make sure you of course have ample space to actually play and make your music. And that's gonna make you feel more comfortable also because you're not worried about the logistics of if I play on the C string, my bow is gonna hit the wall. That's never fun. And then you're thinking about that the entire time when you should be focusing on the music that you're creating. And definitely make sure that the space is quiet too, because especially if you're using really good mics, it's gonna pick up anything. So 
if I use my good Shure SM57 mics, if I'm recording or making a video, the laundry room is right next to the studio space. So if the dryer is going, you can hear it in the background of anything that I record and you can hear it in the background of lessons that I do on those microphones. So just make sure it's nice and quiet to the best of your ability, of course, and that's gonna give you a higher quality recording. Third tip, make as many recordings as you can over as long a period as you can too, depending on you know, the, the importance of this recording, of course. So if it's for a big audition, try to, try to set aside as much time as you can to make recordings. Because I find the more that I record something over and over again, the lower stress it is. And I mean that over like a period of time, over multiple days or multiple weeks, not just making eight recordings in one sitting. That does get stressful. But if you can set aside time over multiple days, then I find that each recording is a little bit of a lower stakes experience because I know I have tomorrow also if this doesn't go well. I have the next day after that. So that just lowers the stakes a little bit, makes it a little bit easier to get the recording that you want without feeling nervous like you're about to have a breakdown. My last tip today has to do with after the recording, make sure that you find, if you're going to edit it at all, make sure that you find an editing software that you're comfortable navigating. So on any Apple device, iMovie comes basically for free. I think it's free on anything, at least, you know, if you have a MacBook or a Mac, then it, it just comes right on the computer. That is usually pretty user-friendly for beginners. Um, I personally use DaVinci Resolve, which has a little bit more of a learning curve, but it gives me a lot more capability than iMovie, and I can control more things that I like to have control of. Um, Pacho's back because I'm sitting in this mysterious teal chair, and he just gets so excited when I sit here. Um, if you're using a phone or a tablet, the app CapCut is also pretty good for that specific um, use case. A lot of people will edit their TikToks or real short form videos in this, and I use it too. Um, and I have heard of a couple people who make YouTube videos, like YouTubers, who will sometimes use this app to actually edit their full YouTube videos. So I think it does have a lot of capabilities, and I believe you can also download it on computers. I haven't tried that, so um, if that information is incorrect, I'll just put it up here. All right, so I know these tips were very basic, but I hope that it helps you along the way if you are entirely new to recording your classical music and just don't know where to begin. If you have any questions about recording that have gone unanswered today, leave it down in the comments. I will try my best to help you out or I will ask some more pro people what they think and get back to you. I hope you make some good recordings, good luck, and I will see you again in two weeks. Thanks for watching. Mm -hmm.